And so, as you journey deeper into the... What? You want what? You want experience points? What, all of you? Like, now? Oh, all right, fine. You all... You all level up. There we go. You all level up. Now let's spend the rest of the session waiting whilst you level up. Hello, and welcome to this episode of How to Be a Great GM. As you can see, some of my nice shinies have arrived from South Africa, courtesy of the Web Goblin, and, um, well, that makes me a very happy GM indeed. What does not make me a happy GM is the tricky question of awarding experience points. Now, most systems have some way in which your characters are going to level up, whether it's pips, points, dots, percentages, percentiles, and how that system actually manifests is, well, unique to each system. And even within systems, there are sometimes various ways in which you can assign that experience point, or that level up, or that tribute growth, or whatever you want to call it. So the very first question that one has to ask when looking at this whole space around experience points is, well, how or what is experience? What is experience? Let's start with that. And once we've established what that is, we're then going to look at milestone versus ad hoc. Later on, we're going to look at what gives experience points. We're going to look at what does a level mean for your players. And then finally, we're going to look at a question which, well, a lot of people think are fairly contentious, and that's who should be getting the experience points? Should it be the player or should it be the character? Now, that's an interesting question and, uh, well, stay tuned to see how I tackle that particular problem at the end of the video. So let's go down to it. So experience points. What is experience points? Well, experience points are gained, generally speaking, through the player character's actions in the game. There's usually a structured way in which characters gain experience points and then they can use those experience points generally to spend points or assign values and things to their various skills that they will have. So experience points in a nutshell allows the player character to change and to develop and acquire new skills. In almost all role-playing games that you play on a computer or on console, they have exactly the same system. You do X, you get experience points, you spend those experience points to be able to gain more skills. There's a reason why we like this kind of system and why it's used in almost all forms of gaming that we have, and we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later in terms of what is actual experience points. Now, the way that a lot of systems advocate characters leveling up or progressing or advancing, because some systems quite emphatically state, this is not a level up, it's an addition, it's an accumulation, it's a, however you want to call it, it's your character, your player characters improving. So there's two general ways that one uh, can approach it, or I say two, but there's technically three, although I haven't seen the third one in action in a very long time. The first one is milestone leveling, and then you have ad hoc leveling, and then you have mechanical leveling. Now, at, let me, but I'm getting confused here with all these different things, right? <laughs> so milestone leveling, Milestone leveling is effectively when you as the game master decide that it's time for the characters to level up. They've done enough stuff to warrant them, well, being slightly better at doing stuff than they were before. This is entirely at your call. The conflict that it can cause is that players feel that you are holding their characters back. I know I myself use milestone leveling because well, I don't really like experience points in the first place. And I think it's given to the wrong person in the game anyway. Well, there's a hint for what's coming up. So I generally will go with milestone leveling. And that's usually when the players say, hmm. So, so can we can we level up? Do you think can we can we can our characters improve in a level just a little bit? Just you know, can we can we get a level? In which case, I'll usually say, oh yes, fine, all right, fine, take a level, whatever. There are implications, of course, to characters going up levels, which we'll come to in a little bit. But the idea is with milestone leveling is that the characters complete an adventure or a task or a goal and that they can then level up or spend their points however they choose to to represent that they have progressed forward. Ad hoc uh, 
allocation of experience points is something that was very, very common and very popular in the earlier role-playing systems. I remember in Dungeons & Dragons 2nd Edition, the experience points required to level up was different depending on which class you were playing, and that was supposed to balance out the power that the classes had as they got up and higher higher in the level structure, giving them more and more abilities. So ad hoc is literally, as the player says, oh, I tie a rope around myself and my fellow party members before we start climbing down the mountain. That's a good idea. 50 experience points for you. Personally, I find it a little bit disruptive, and I find that it makes the players a lot, well, some of them a lot more greedy in terms of, oh, if we come up with cool ideas, we're going to get experience points. Great. I'm going to ignore my intelligence score or my character's mental abilities and just come up with really cool ideas. It has nothing to do with role-playing. It's all about getting experience points. So ad hoc experience points suffer from that. They also suffer from the fact that there are players out there who really just want to go along for the ride and like to listen to a good story and participate every now and again in combat. They themselves are not active members, they're not coming up with grand ideas, they're watching what other people do and enjoying the ideas that the other people have. They're never going to level up, they're going to get experience points for when they're supposed to, and that's it. Mechanical leveling, which I don't see very often, but it may very well be part of your game and something that you take for granted, mechanical leveling is literally awarding experience points as the book describes. So as your rule book says, they get experience points for doing X, Y, and Z. As the character does X, Y, and Z, you make a note of it, you write it down secretly on a piece of paper, keeping track of the experience points of all the different players, and then at the end of the adventure, you award it to them, or when your book says that you should give it to them. And they can then do as they wish with that experience points. Now, the negative side of that, of course, is as the game master, you have to keep track of the experience points. It opens up argumentative players going, but remember when I did this, did I get experience points for that? And, and remember when I did that, because I remember in the rule book under why, it's specifically says if I do this I get that much experience point. Are you sure your maths is right? It opens up a can of worms which well quite frankly is just terrifying to deal with. And that's a product of today's modern age I suppose. Everyone feels they should be treated fairly even if they're not performing equitably. Well that's how it that's how we are. So the idea of the three different systems, and there may be a fourth that I'm completely unaware of, but those generally are the three big ones. The um, idea here is that you need to choose which system works best for you, and then you need to tell your players up front so that they know what to expect. They don't sit there going, oh, I wonder if we're going to, should I ask them if we should level or not? I tell my players up front that I forget about leveling and that they should remind me when they feel that they should level up, and then I will decide if they have done something worthwhile or not. Now, this again comes back down to my personal philosophy of what experience points should be, but more on that later. So, what gives experience points? What are the fundamentals? Generally speaking, experience points are awarded when actions are completed or taken that are fairly intelligent. When role-playing is done, so, oh, you're playing to your character type, you get experience points. Experience points sometimes are awarded for time. While you've been playing for seven sessions, you should probably level up. They are awarded generally for killing things. Monsters manuals since days gone by have always included the amount of experience points that a creature being slain is worth, or the amount of attribute points that your character can get. So killing things is generally the easiest way of going up levels, uh, gaining experience points. Resolving stories, generally speaking, they will talk, rule books will talk about when the characters solve your adventure or when they complete the mission, they gain a certain amount of experience points. Again, both of those speak really to an ad hoc system or to the mechanical system, whereby the players know that at the end of the mission they get certain points. Now, this might act as a carrot to dangle in front of your players if your players are particularly difficult about following missions. If your players are generally very scattered and don't follow the missions that you've laid out for them, well, by offering them experience points for completing missions, you might shift their attitude towards those plot hooks that you've been desperately throwing out and no one's been biting on. It might change their attitude. On the other hand, you run the risk that it turns them all into XP hobos, or whores, as I wanted to say, XP murder hobo whores, where they just run around killing everything to gain that all precious experience points, as well as they run around just trying to get experience points by doing all the stuff that's required. Again, it removes from the whole idea of role-playing, and it's more about, well, XP acquisition. 
which is not necessarily a bad thing, but it can lead to a very dull kind of environment. Why do you need a story when you're just desperate to get experience points? And to be perfectly honest, how many of us have played computer games where there's reams and reams of dialogue from all those NPCs that we just go skip, 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 skip. What do I have to do? Kill 10 things, collect 15 of those, and bring them back to here. Okay, good. And off we go. We don't care about the story anymore. So those are some of the risks that come up with that kind of, of um, XP awarding. Now, that we sort of understand what XP is and how people can get XP and the dangers that come with the different ways of awarding experience points, let's look at what does a level mean. I mean, when you get a level, when your character gains an attribute point or when they suddenly have an extra pip and biting or whatever the system dictates, what does that mean? Well, from my understanding, there's three different areas that, that experience points and gaining a level means. From a player perspective, because it's always from the player perspective, from the character's perspective, they really don't care. They're non-existent imaginary entities. You must remember this. So it's always from the player's perspective. So what does the player get when their character levels? Well, they obviously get more points to spend, more skills, more abilities, an easier chance to hit stuff or do more damage. They get more spells. They get more powers. They get well, generally speaking, they get to change and adapt their character. Now, this is the standard and almost only theme that runs through most role-playing games that are online. The characters simply advance with more powerful and better or cooler stuff. There's nothing wrong with this. Everyone likes things to change and adapt. And I, for one, will tell you that if your character stays the same throughout, it can be very boring. As a matter of fact, my whole channel is advocating that your character should change, but not necessarily in the abilities that they have, but in how they, as a character, evolve and grow and learn. Now, more on that later. Again, later. So... Characters, when they level up, they gain more powers, they gain more skills, they gain more abilities. For a player, that means that they've now got more stuff that they can use in combat and in situations to overcome those challenges. For them, it, re it represents the ability to do more stuff, or easier stuff, let's put it that way. They also get a sense of achievement. Now, this is very important, and this ties in with awarding treasure and awarding those kind of abilities. A sense of achievement... I have managed to get my wimpy little character up a level. Now that achievement of course is degraded if you use milestone leveling. If everybody just gets painted with the same brush, if everyone just gets, oh you all just level up. That sense of achievement is slightly diminished because, well, you didn't have to do anything to get that level. You just basically had to show up for the adventures. And I've even had players who argued that, well, yes, I missed three of the six sessions, but I should level up as well because, well, everyone else is leveling up and it would be unfair for me to have a difference in, in skill abilities. So <laughs> XP is a contentious issue in almost all cases anyway. So the idea of a sense of achievement is greater when it comes from an ad hoc kind of experience point system or from that mechanical experience point system because it feels more earned. The player has actively done stuff to get their character to the next level. So there's that wonderful sense of achievement. Now, the third thing, and this is what's going to finally lead me into that point that I've been driving at throughout this entire video, is the third way in which leveling up rewards the player is that they get recognition for improving. Now that's different from a sense of achievement. A sense of achievement is simply you have got from point A to point B. Here is a noddy badge, a cloak of hiding, as well as a sword of plus one hitting versus vampires, and you get some new uh, <laughs> you get some new cool skill powers, not some skill cool powers. So you get some new cool skill powers. Recognition of growth and development is for me the most integral intri is the most important fundamental reason for awarding a new level in the first place now again i started off talking about this particular section what is a level by saying that it only applies to the players not to the characters the dwarf does not give a fig if he now has more abilities he really doesn't because well he is the player the player is concerned with upgrading and developing and improving their character. The emphasis for me in most role-playing games is missed. Leveling up the character is purely an imaginatory exercise. You now have more mathematical value 
to do more stuff. You yourself, as the player, are not in any shape, way, or form improved by what you have been doing. You have got some memories, you've got some cool stories to share with people, but have you as the player, have you actually developed and have you actually grown? Have you tried to take a challenging role of a coward perhaps and made the most of it while still keeping that coward part of the team and still involving them in combat and then looking at the repercussions for that character? So the recognition and development section of experience points, in my opinion, has been lost. Now, in the older versions of games, there was a system whereby you would get awarded experience points for role-playing. And in some of the new systems, they talk about role-playing experience. Generally, though, people avoid that because it's, it's casting judgment on your players. I feel that you, you are a good actor... And so you portrayed your character very well. You are a very bad actor and you speak in monotone. So you did not do that very well. That's a very shallow view of awarding experience points for the character uh, role playing. A monotonous, dull person who is not used to expressing themselves, who doesn't have a fantastic vocabulary, or who is not a natural performer who can bring to light the fears and terrors of his character. You don't need that. What you as the game master need to recognize is that person who is perhaps not as animated as another person, that person is having deep thoughts and taking deep actions based on what they believe to be their character's emotional and intellectual decision-making process. They're also trying to make those decisions within the confines of a group dynamic, hopefully. They're also trying to make sure that they keep the party together and working together, hopefully. That is what needs to be recognized. How do you do that, though? How do you know what's in the mind of the player sitting there who's very quietly working all of this out in their head as opposed to the player who's loudly articulating exactly what they're doing and why they're doing it? The only way that I have found for that kind of experience points to be recognized or to be awarded is for a post-event discussion. Now, if you head on over to Bacon RPG, our sister channel, you'll see there that I run the Adventures of the Windswift. And at the end of every single one of those adventures, at the end of every single episode, I spend 15 to 20 minutes discussing with each player why they did certain things during the game, what were their motivations, what were their thought processes behind everything, how were they doing things. And there was a lot of player conflict that was going on behind the scenes, which you only discover in those kinds of dialogues, in those discussions. And that is something that allows you to then say, well, the player is really working hard to keep the party together or to make sure that their character responds appropriately uh, to the situation, etc. That, for me, is where milestone leveling should happen. Now, that isn't always easier. So how do you judge whether the player has been growing or not? Have they learned to RP better? Well, that's difficult, especially for non-actor types. If they are there and they represent their character, are they role-playing? Well, there's an argument to be made there. And this is a gray area within the experience point system. Is they're there, they're showing up every week, they're talking about their character, and in those post-game discussions, you are gathering that they are desperately trying to represent that character as best they can. They're just not an actor. So they can't physically demonstrate it with voice and with action are they engaging with your npcs do they actively engage with the npcs or are they hitting that skip button and just trying to get to the next killing sequence if they are engaging with the npcs there is something to reward them with they are acknowledging that there is a story and that you as the game master have all this stuff set up for each npc to be able to then expound and give them more information do they work the story? Are they engaging with the story? Are they trying to think of ways and overcome things? Are they linking different pieces of information together in the story? Or are they just passively sitting there waiting for you to disgorge the next piece of information? 
Do they invest time and effort in their characters? I have met so many players who spend more time on their characters and thinking up things than dungeon masters spend on creating their adventures. That's phenomenal. That amount of focus on a single character is fantastic and should be recognized. But often we don't. I have some players who rock up at the table and they go, oh yeah, who was I playing? Oh yeah, the dwarf. Oh, I left the character sheet at home. That is not a player who cares about their game or their character. That's a, that's a player who is really just there for the social aspect of it. So should they be getting as ex much experience? Should their characters be advancing as fast as someone who's putting in hours of work writing pages worth of history or going, you know, I think if my character wants to get there, they need to do the. And so I've been thinking, can I talk to you about my character's development? Can I ask you more about the lore of the world so my character fits into it better? Those are the players that should, in my opinion, be the ones that are leveling up better or more frequently than the ones who just sit back and go, meh. Conflict resolution. Are the players invested in conflict resolution? Are they sitting there going, all right, I can see that between these two players there's a bit of tension because one feels the other one is maybe being too dominant or being too this or too that, or this player doesn't really know the rules too well, so I'm going to help them there a little bit, whereas this player does. Are they doing that? If they're doing that, they're trying to improve the game. They're trying to help the game, and they should be rewarded accordingly. What does this mean? What am I driving at here? What's this overall thing that I'm talking about? What I suggest, and you can give this a try and see whether it works for your group in terms of enhancing the story and enhancing the game or not. What I suggest is that you propose to your players a new form of leveling. One that mm, takes into account the mechanics. The book says you get X amount of experience points when you kill a creature. Sure, you can keep track of that however you want, whether it's mechanical or ad hoc or, well, quite frankly, just keeping track of the number of monsters that they killed. On the other hand, you want to add in experience points awarded for the players doing role-playing, engaging with NPCs, working the story, investing time and effort in their character and in preparation for the game engaging in conflict resolution within the party to keep party dynamics working, telling a good narrative. If you outline to your players, this is what we're looking for, rather than you are looking to kill monsters, finish missions, and um, steal gold, that's how you're going to get experience points. Instead of saying that's how you're going to do it, rather propose you as a player will gain experience points for doing these things in game and outside of game because the player is the one who's leveling up not the character see how that changes the party dynamic if it changes at all some players might not buy into the system and say oh, i'm not comfortable with me earning experience points i want my, my character to earn experience points well then that's absolutely fine and if you also disagree with the idea that the players themselves are the ones that are actually developing and growing well, then I'm not sure why you're looking at this channel in the first place. This channel is about growth and development. If you have no way of recording or gauging your growth and development as a person, I'm not sure how you're going to see any kind of improvement or advancement. This is a way of making sure that the game offers that. Yes, your character will go up and level, your character will get cool, new, shiny stuff, but it's based on you as a player gaining additional narrative skill, additional group dynamic skill, additional social skills, things that we can actually see improving over time. Well, those are my thoughts anyway on experience points and how this whole convoluted space could possibly work and co possibly be turned in such a way that the players start to realize the value of experience points other than just getting cool imaginary stuff if they themselves can actually gain benefit if they can see themselves leveling up because they've been active in doing the various things that i've listed then what a wonderful space would be and we'd end up with tables of players who really just want to be there to tell a good story to have a lot of fun and to just involve themselves as best they can 
That, for me, is the ideal table. Maybe for you, it's one where the players show up and mechanically and methodically work through the game system. That's absolutely fine as well. What I'm proposing is always based around improving narrative and improving social collective storytelling. So, what do you think? What are your takes on experience point? Did I miss one out? Is there more than just milestone ad hoc and mechanical? Is there a fourth one, perhaps? I don't know. Share so we can all learn in the comment section below. If you like this, hit the like button. If you uh, want to see more, hit the subscribe button to tell us that we're doing the right thing and that we're on the right track. And, um, of course, you can always leave your comments below. So, until next time, I wish you and yours the very happiest of leveling.